There are a few announcements. Next week is Loose Change Sunday. So start wrapping those coins up. On the 8th, there's the Elders and Deacons meeting at 6 and a full consistory at 7. As always, if you have any concerns, please see a consistory member. <clears throat> On Sunday the 14th is Mother's Day. On Wednesday the 17th, we have an Archangels meeting at 10.30. <clears throat> Excuse me. On Saturday the 20th, we're having John Ward's funeral service here at 12. Uh, the, um, on the back of our bulletin, our monthly mission this month is Camp Fowler. We have several kids who go. Please consider um, your benevolence. This week on Friday, the office will be closed. Just keep that in mind. Are there any other announcements? Ellen, I know you have something. This will be a ladies' tea, June the 3rd, uh, from 2 to 4. I have tickets, so anyone that's interested can be here at the church. Thank you. Yes, Sue. I'm John Ward's funeral. Um, we are doing a reception dessert at the uh, firehouse, so if anybody's willing to bake little cookies or something for that this evening. Okay, see Sue for cookies for John Ward's reception after the funeral. Are there any other announcements? Seeing none, let's praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Our call to worship this morning. Psalm 119, verses 43 and 44. Do not snatch the word of truth from my mouth, for I have put my hope in your laws. I will always obey your law forever and ever. Amen. Our sentences this morning from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Peter chapter 2. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now, you have been returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Our opening hymn is number 345, Blessed Assurance.
words of reading this morning is from John chapter 10. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him, because they do not know the voice of strangers. So again Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved, and will come in and go out and find pasture. This is not the first time that he has been in a really bad place health-wise, and the Lord has brought him back. So I told him, don't be surprised if you end up starting another whole ministry down the road a little ways. But the point that he is at right now, he really needs our prayer. So. And Jim is going to be going in this week for a consultation with his doctor. We'll be praying for him. And my parents are still very much in need of prayer, so we'll be praying for them. Bill got some good news this week. You wanna you wanna share it or okay. so Results came back, and uh, we have dropped from six to a two, as far as the effectiveness of the radiation, obviously been very effective. We're moving in the right direction, and thank you, Lord, for that. Okay. 
Okay. Who else? Bruce. Did you hear it here by Brother Alexis from New Jersey? He's advancing further down the road to the Brazilian South. Just a little bit. It's Kathy and Kathy and Mike. Kathy and Mike, thank you. Your mom and sister are going to Tennessee? Okay. solution. us wherever two or more are gathered in your name that you're in the midst of us. We thank you, Lord, that you're here. Father, being here is no limitation on you to prevent you from being anywhere else. Lord, we ask that you would touch Dave where he is. Lord, we pray for your healing power to flow through him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Lord, we ask that you would bring healing not only with these new problems that are cropping up, but with the chronic ones that have been lingering. Father, we pray that you would enable him to continue to minister for you in whatever way you have for him. Lord, we pray for Jim, that you would be with him as he goes for his consultation this week. We pray, Lord, that you would give his doctors wisdom and insight. But Lord, we pray that you would do the work in him that needs to be done. That you would bring healing and strength. 
Father, I pray for my parents that you would touch them, that you would work in them the healing that's needed, that you would continue to draw them close to you. Father, we thank you for a good report from Bill. We pray, Lord, that you would continue that healing that you're doing in him. Father, we thank you. Lord, we ask for Kathy that you would strengthen her, that you would be with her to encourage her, and Lord, that you would bring help alongside when she needs it. Father, from Mike, we pray that you would give him peace in his heart and mind, and Lord, that you would be with him. Father, that there would be opportunities for the two of them to share communion with you, to know that you are their God, even in difficult times, even in trying times, even when he's not always sure where he is or what's happening, that he would know that you are with him, and that you love him, that his family is with him, and that they love him. Lord, we pray for Jenny as she goes for this, this report, these results. We pray, Lord, for good news. Father, we pray that you would do the work in her that needs to be done, that you would continue the healing in her. Father, we pray as Jen and Alexa are traveling to Tennessee that you would watch over them and keep them safe. Father, for Mark, we pray, Lord, that you would bring healing, that you would open up these blood vessels, that the, the flow of blood to the heart would be adequate for all of the needs that he has. And Lord, that you would give him relief from these symptoms. Father, we pray for Jessica that you would be with her as she's going through this cancer treatment. We pray, Lord, that you would deliver her from this cancer, that it would be gone. Father, we pray for John with the hip problems, that you would bring healing in him, that you would strengthen him that you would help them to find whatever is needed in the way of therapy or so on to be able to strengthen his hip and keep his mobility. Father, for Diana, Lord, we pray that your peace that passes all understanding would surround her. Lord, that she would have a sense of your presence, that she would know that you are with her. Lord, that you would make yourself known to her. Father, we pray that you would be with all of her loved ones, that you would bring them your peace. Father, we thank you that whatever we face, whatever we deal with, we don't have to do it alone, that we can call on you. Even in the silence of our own hearts, that we can call out to you and you hear us. Lord, for every unspoken need that's in this place, you know what our needs are. And we pray, Lord, that you administer to each one. Father, we thank you that we're able to trust you in Jesus' name. Let's pray as Jesus talks. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand if you're able for hymn number 446, I Will Serve You. Mm -hmm. 
We need the rain just as much as we need the sunshine for things to grow. The grass, the trees, the flowers, the plants, the food, and us. You know, the world runs out of water, we're all in bad shape. So, we need the rain. There will be times in life when things will happen that we're not excited about. There will be times when we will go through difficult circumstances. And there will be times when things will happen that we can say, ah, don't believe it. I have been waiting for this and now it's ruined. This is part of life, that bad things happen. And sometimes when they happen, we might even want to say, God, why did you let that happen? But the fact is, we need the rain just as much as we need the sun in order to grow. If everything was just easy for us all the time and we never had to struggle for anything, we never had to work for anything, we wouldn't grow at all, would we? Yeah. If all you do is sit and play video games all the time, you're going to have really strong thumbs and nothing else. you got to get up and go and do stuff once in a while. Even if you would rather have it rain on Saturday so you can stay in. Right? Your dad would go out anyway. Your dad would go out anyway. He would go out in the rain. Yeah. I like running in the rain. There's just something about it. Yeah. Once I was out in the rainstorm and uh, the, st the storm was so heavy at that time that it was actually backing up the storm drain. The grate had leaves and stuff over it, and the water was flooding up. It was ankle deep. And so it was at my buddy's house, and he went out with a shovel and was trying to clear off the grate. And I'm out there in the water with him, standing there holding an umbrella, trying to keep him from getting completely drenched. And neither one of us was really thinking about the fact that it's a thunderstorm. <laughs> and our wives are up in the windows looking at it saying, these two idiots are going to get themselves killed. <laughs> that has absolutely nothing to do with the children's message. I just thought I'd throw that out there. So remember, into each life a little rain must fall. It's okay, because it's going to make you cry. All right? Which brings us to Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Acts chapter 2, it's not Pentecost yet. Yeah. Well, we're going later in the chapter. And Pentecost will be here before you know it. Beginning with verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. I could almost stop right there. But. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts, they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. May the Lord add his blessing to his word. Let's pray. Father, as we turn now from your word, which is divine and inspired to my words. I pray, Lord, that you would guide everything that is said, everything that is heard, that what is from you would be sealed in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, many years ago, there was a commercial on TV for breakfast cereal, and it was kind of a blast.
blind taste test. They didn't tell you what the cereal was, they just handed you a bowl and said, try it, tell us what you think. And people were tasting it and saying, mm, yeah, that, that's good, it's, it's crunchy, it's tasty, it's just the right amount of filling. Yeah, yeah, this, this is good. What is it? And uh, at least those were the people that they showed in the commercial. If there was any that didn't like it, they didn't use them in the commercial. So, at the end of the commercial, they showed you the box. And it was Kellogg's Corn Flakes. And the tagline was, taste them again for the first time. The idea being that Kellogg's Corn Flakes have been around for so long that everybody just kind of takes them for granted and nobody really thinks about them anymore. And hey, if you try them, You'll remember that you actually like them, and then maybe you'll buy some. Sometimes I wonder if we don't do the same thing with the church that people did with Kellogg's Corn Flakes. It's been here for so long, and it's been a part of us for so long, that we kind of take it for granted and we forget what it is. So... Let's go back and look. I want to read that verse 42 again. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. The church is not a human invention. I'm going to say that part again because it's important. The church was not invented by people. There are those out there who believe that all of organized religion is just a scam and uh, that there's nothing to it. Mm, no. The church was created by God. The church was created by God as the natural and necessary result of salvation by grace alone through faith alone, in Christ alone. Because when we have been given this fantastic of a gift that we can't earn, we just need to come together with others and celebrate that. We need to. Now these guys, when they started what has become the church. They devoted themselves to four things. First listed is the apostles' teaching. Okay, who are the apostles? If you've heard of the artist formerly known as Prince, the apostles are the guys formerly known as disciples. They spent three years living with Jesus following wherever he led, watching whatever he did, and hearing everything that he said. They heard every sermon that he preached, from the Sermon on the Mount, right through to the end. They heard everything that he said both publicly and privately. The parables that he told to the crowds and the explanation of the parables that he sometimes told to them alone, although it's recorded for us, for our benefit. Everything that he did, the miracles that he performed, the people that he healed, the people that he raised from the dead. The thousands of people who he fed with a little bit. All of that, they saw it, they heard it, they experienced it firsthand. So they knew who Jesus was, what he was, why he was here. And they understood that when he left, 
it was on them to continue in the same way. And that's what they set out to do. So if you want to know what the apostles' teaching was, you look at what Jesus' teaching was. And what was Jesus' teaching? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are all who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's the apostles' teaching, because that was the teaching of Jesus. Everything that he said, they taught. But it wasn't just the apostles' teaching that they were devoted to. There was also fellowship. Now, I have heard people say, you know, the wilderness is my church, the forest is where I hear from God, it's where I'm close to God, it's where I go to pray. And that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. But it's not enough on its own. We need each other. We need to come together in times of fellowship, in times of worship. Iron sharpens iron. And in order to be the church, we need each other. Uh, obviously, in the height of the pandemic, we were pretty much separated from each other because it was necessary and everybody was separated from everybody. But even then, we found ways to communicate with each other. We found ways to share our worship with each other. We found ways Thank God for the technology. We found ways to encourage each other and to carry on as a church, as a body, as a family. <coughs> that fellowship is a necessary part of the church. Breaking bread. Now that can have two meanings. First of all, the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. This is something that Jesus himself commanded us to do, and what's more, he commanded us to do it at a time when he was at his most vulnerable as a human being. It was when he knew that he was about to go into the crucifixion. He was about to be abandoned by everyone, including his father and he was going to face alone what we should have faced so that we wouldn't have to. At that moment, he gave us the sacrament of communion. And he said, do this and remember me. And we do. Breaking bread can also refer to, and later on in the passage that I read, it very clearly does, refer to just sitting down and eating together. We do that too. Hey, we love doing that. And there's nothing wrong with that. If God didn't want us to break bread together, he wouldn't have put so many good cooks in one church. But that's also a part of who we are. That the church gets together and shares their lives with each other. We are part of each other. We're family. Last of all, to prayer. Because when everything else is said and done, 
prayer is where it all rests. In order for the church to be the church, each individual in the church needs to have their relationship with God. These relationships are all dependent on this relationship being right. Each one of us needs to be in prayer. Now, there was a movie that came out when I was young, uh, Rutger Hauer, Michelle Pfeiffer, and Matthew Broderick was the comic relief. It was called Lady Hawk. It's kind of an interesting medieval thing. I'm not recommending the movie, I'm just referring to it for this. Matthew Broderick's character throughout the entire movie, he's a sneak thief and a little hooligan, but throughout the entire movie, he maintains a running commentary to God on everything that happens around him and everything that he experiences. And as goofy as it was in the movie, there's something to be taken from that. We need to pray without ceasing. We need to be aware, no matter where we are or what we're doing, that God is with us. That He can hear us even there. Now that may even cause us to change what we're doing. There may be times when if I'm thinking about the fact that God is with me, I might do things a little differently. And that's a good thing too. We need to have that communication with Him. We need to have that prayer. We need to be devoted to it. Dedicated to it. The prayer that Jesus gave us which we prayed just a few minutes ago. That's a good place to start. We end our prayer with the Lord's Prayer every time. But you know, you can start your prayer with the Lord's Prayer. If you don't know what else to say, start there. But don't just run through it by rote and be done with it so that 16 seconds after you started, you're done praying for the day. Stop and think about every single line, every single word, what it means. Consider it. And then, build on it. Go on from there. Having prayed that prayer, put your own words in there. Pour it out. If you're still struggling to get started, go into the Psalms. The Psalms are a long book full of prayer. Sometimes that can help prime your pump. You find one that puts into words what you're feeling at that moment. That gets you started talking to God. And once you get started, it's easier to keep going. Prayer is important. Now verse 43 says, Everyone was filled with awe at the wonders and signs performed by the Apostle. We don't see the miracles as frequently and as flagrantly as they did. Nobody has ever been healed from a lifelong condition that I know of by my shadow passing over them as I walk down the street. But that happened with some of these apostles. Nevertheless, we do see God do miracles. We have seen it. And we have absolutely no idea the prayers that God has answered that we didn't even realize at the time. But the important thing is the church lives in the power of Christ. And Christ lived in power. Was there ever a storm that upset Jesus? No. 
I told the kids I like to run in the rain. He went for a walk in a storm across the Sea of Galilee. Didn't phase him. The refrigerator's empty. That's okay. He took a kid's lunch and fed 5,000. There was absolutely nothing that could come up that he didn't have a solution for because he walked in the power of God. His arrest, his crucifixion, his death, all of that happened because he allowed it to happen for us. Like a five-year-old taking down Andre the Giant. If Jesus had not wanted to be crucified, if he had not been willing to be crucified, it wouldn't have happened. But then we would be lost. He walked in power. And the church should be walking in that same power. Not to use it lightly. Not to turn these stones to bread so that we can make sandwiches. But that when the moment comes that the power of God is needed in this situation, we're able to call on Him with faith and confidence that He's with us. All the believers were together and had everything in common, sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. I read that the first time and I thought, huh, that's different. And when I was a teenager, I asked somebody, isn't that kind of like socialism? And several people that, oh boy, because they thought I was opening Pandora's box. And one wise individual said, actually, no. Socialism is the government taking everything and then doling out what they think appropriate. What this is, is generosity. This is giving to others from what you have. Everything that God creates is beautiful. And this sharing that they did was created by God, just as surely as the church was created by God. And it was beautiful. One had a need, the other had an abundance. They took care of that. Anything that God makes that is beautiful, the enemy will try to counterfeit. He will make something that kind of looks like it, but isn't. Enough on that. So, every day they continued to meet in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together. So the church doesn't just count when we assemble in this building. When the ladies meet up, whether it's out in the parking lot or at the Half Moon Diner or wherever, when you all get together, that's the church. Anywhere that we encounter each other, that's the church. Two or three of you have a cup of coffee down at the store, that's the church. We take it with us where we go. It's not the building, it's the people. Praising God and enjoying the favor of all people, and the Lord added to their number daily those who are being saved. If the church is lacking in power, if the church is lacking in joy, if the church is lacking in life, 
And is it really the church? We're not here for the rules and the regulations of religion. We're not here to make sure that everybody lines up with the way I think everything should be. Or the way you think everyone should be. We're not here for the dogma. We're not here for the, we've always done it this way, therefore that must be right. And we're definitely not here for the extra expectations that we tend to put on ourselves. We're here to be the church. To devote ourselves to the teachings of Jesus. To worship together. Fellowship with each other. Celebrate what the Lord has done for us. And to pray. That's what the church is for. That's what the church is. That's what the church does. And if that's what the church is, and if that's what the church does, then we should fear God and nothing else. Amen. Closing him is number 398, Fill My Cup Bowl.
May the Lord lift up his countenance before you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.